Masonry grid layouts are a great way to showcase a gallery of images. You see them on popular websites like Unsplash and Pinterest. However, most tutorials will show you a column-based approach using the CSS column property where the order of items starts at the top left and goes down the column and then wraps to the next column. In this example, we'll use Macy.js in Webflow to create a row-based structure starting from the top left and going to the right for the second item and third item and so on, wrapping down to the next row. Hey there, Web Bay. Here in Webflow, I have a CMS collection with 17 images, and then I have that CMS collection on the page here. We have the wrapper, our list, and our item. And then within the item, we have an image and a name. I'm surfacing the name here to show that I'm sorting this CMS collection by the name alphabetically. So we should expect this to go across the rows by A, B, C, D, and so on, so that we can see this is using the horizontal masonry grid format. If we head over to the page settings and scroll to the bottom, we'll see that I'm deferring two scripts here. The first is the Macy.js library via CDN, and the second is a code sandbox file. The list element in our collection list has an ID of masonry, which is what we're gonna use with Macy.js to target our container. Macy.js looks at all the direct children of that container to know what to add styling to. We can go ahead and publish this and get working on our code. All that we need to do to add a new masonry grid is to create a variable, we'll call it Macy instance, and then call the Macy function with a capital M. Inside of the function parentheses, I've added two curly braces because we're going to specify our options object there. The only option that is required is the property of container, and I'm passing that our ID of masonry, which again, we added to the CMS list element. If I save now and refresh over on the left side, we can see that we're getting a really basic masonry grid with all the default settings by Macy.js. We can customize those default settings here in our code. I'm passing a margin of 16 pixels. I'm setting the columns on the default breakpoint here, the desktop breakpoint at four columns. And then I'm using this break at property and passing another object here signified by the curly braces. This object shows that below 991 pixels, we want a three column format. Below 767 pixels, we want a two column format. And then below 479 pixels, we want a one column format. We'll see that we can now resize this window and our breakpoints will adhere as we've specified in the options object. If you look at the Macy.js documentation, you'll see that margin can take an object itself where we set X to something like 20 and Y to something like 10. And if I save and refresh, we'll see that we can specify both the X and Y margin in this case. I'm gonna set this back to 16. And you should also know that you can specify different margins within your breakpoints in the break at here. So I could say something like columns five and margin, another object X, uh, we'll say 10 and we'll set Y to something like two pixels. If I save and refresh and then come down to our tablet breakpoint, we'll see that we're getting five columns now, again, all sorted by alphabetical here. And then we have that Y margin on that breakpoint of two and X is 10. And then if we come down even further, we see that those margins hold on the lower breakpoints as well. Let's go ahead and reset to a more basic options object. The next thing to think about is how these images look in designer. Right now, it's a little bit hard to work with because I have all of the images taking up the full width here. To make this look a little bit more like it'll look on the live site, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the list element and I'll set its display to flex horizontal and then wrap the items. Now it still looks the exact same, but we can come to our items and we can set the max width property here corresponding to how our breakpoints are working. I'm gonna set the max width on the desktop breakpoint to be 100% divided by four, which is the number of columns we have on the desktop breakpoint, which is 25, of course. And then I'll come down to tablet and I'll set this to 100 divided by 3%. And then I'll come down to mobile landscape, 100 divided by 2%. And then on mobile portrait, we'll just set 100% because we only have one column there. Now within designer, things look a bit more normal. And if we publish, we can see that even on initial load, our styles look a little bit better and closer to what things will look like after Macy.js run. Let's work on making that initial load look a little bit nicer. You can see if I refresh the page, things are unstyled, then Macy.js runs and everything looks great in the masonry grid format. In Webflow, I'm gonna take the image class and set width to 100% and height to 100%. And I'll go ahead and set the fit to cover. Next, I'll select the item element and add some CSS transitions to add a little bit of animation to this. I wanna add CSS transitions to the filter property, to the top property, and to the left property. 
Macy.js uses these to position our elements within the masonry grid. Next, we'll use a combo class called isLoading, and we'll set the filter there to be a blur of something like 10 pixels. In our code, we want to make sure that after Macy.js runs and creates our grid, that we want to remove that isLoading class from every item. To do that, we use the document.querySelectorAll method on our class of item, and then we'll loop through all of those items, and we'll use the class list and we'll remove the class of is loading from all of those. If I save and then refresh over here, we can see that these all show up in their unstyled states in a blur. So it does look like things are loading. And then once Macy.js has loaded, we remove that is loading class and everything snaps to the place it needs to go and that blur gets removed. Be sure to check out the clonable in the description below so that you can add these cool horizontal masonry grids to your repertoire. Now, if you like the video, like and subscribe. And also, I'm going to have YouTube recommend another video. It's going to pop up right now. I'm waiting on it. I'm waiting on it. All right. Yeah, check that video out. It's going to show you how to do something else really cool. And if you like this video, you'll probably like that one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.